Do we have any pool players in the room? A few pool players? Okay. So I am not actually a pool player, but I love watching people who play pool. And what I really love are when one shot puts two or three balls in the pocket. Those, those, that ability to have to take one shot and have it solve multiple problems is something that I just really gravitate towards. And so when I started learning about uh, anaerobic digesters, what I saw in that was the ultimate bank shot. The ability to turn something that creates pollution, i.e. cow poop, and, and turn it into a renewable form of energy that can either be a renewable natural gas or cleaned up and power generator. And then the byproduct of it produces fertilizer and bedding. I loved it. It's a, it is great. It creates a new source of revenue for the farmers, solves some of our renewable energy issues, and, and addresses climate change. I thought it was brilliant. And I was like, who is not going to like this? So I started talking about anaerobic digesters and who wasn't going to like it. And you know what? There's plenty of people who don't like it. <laughs> Too much to my surprise. But it led me to a conversation um, about the transportation sector and about the opportunities for renewable gas in the transportation sector and the ability to address what is the largest producer of greenhouse gases in our world, and that is transportation. And that led me to um, working to draft the low carbon fuel standard, what's now called the clean fuel standard bill. Um, and it's been a passion of mine to really try to um, move this forward because I think it's such a critical part of the solution to addressing climate change and to moving us towards achieving our very big goals um, for reducing greenhouse gases and finally addressing climate change in our economy. So, um, I'm here to be an advocate for that, as I suspect everybody in this room who's talked to you so far today has been. Um, but what I'm going to talk to you about is what I see, is why I think this is, this, this is such a critical piece of legislation, a critical piece of policy for us to adopt in the short term, as in, in this coming legislative session. And I, and I, because I really like, I, for my private sector days, I really like PowerPoints. I made you a PowerPoint presentation, <laughs> making a case for clean fuels. So we have to meet the challenge. We've got some big goals, and none of these are going to be uh, without, you have heard all of these before. We need to re reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, and we need to transition to a, as close as we can get, to a zero emissions economy. But our strategy is going to be involved a series of tactics. And the question is, are the tactics going to work, or are we going to experience some headwinds? And I'm here to talk to you about these headwinds. Um, and I can see them falling into three categories. One is the state of our electric grid. The second is the capacity of EV manufacturers um, to deliver enough product to meet our needs in a timely fashion. And the third is consumer adoption, because at the end of the day, somebody has to write a check to buy these vehicles. And are they going to be willing to do it? So just to set the stage a little bit, emissions in the transportation sector have been sort of percolating. They're high, and they've been sort of percolating along. And if we were to draw a straight line, we would see that over the course of the last 20 years, they have increased, in part because we have 11 million vehicles registered in New York State. 11 million vehicles registered in New York State. And every year, we get more vehicles registered in New York State. That, too, is increasing. These are the goals, and you've seen these, um, that we want to reduce our greenhouse gases to 85% of the 1990 levels. Um, and that's reflected in this chart. But let's talk about the headwinds. So the first is the grid capacity. So I turned to the ISO, the Independent System Operator, to give me some insights into what is the state of New York's grid today and how prepared is our grid to handle an increase in demand in the electric market. And they highlight in this um, analysis, which they call zonal resource adequacy margins, what is the capacity in our grid to handle surges in demand? So the 
the zonal resource adequacy margin is the measure of how much excess capacity we have to handle surges in demand. 